Welcome to my weekly review. You're looking at a daily chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can see last week it was rejected once again at the 200 simple moving average. This seems to be a pretty consistent pattern here. The market sold off uh, last week due to uh, Jerome Powell's uh, job owning the market down and uh, raising interest rates and talking about higher for longer and all that good stuff that Mr. Transitory has been speaking since Jackson Hole. So anyway, that, that got rejected. You know, I'm kind of skeptical of any market that has a Dow Jones leading anyway. It's got 30 stocks in it. It's not really one that I follow. One that I do follow is the NASDAQ. It's got the growth component. It has been uh, trading below its 200 simple moving average since January 18th, I want to say. Right here, yeah, January 18th. So it's been almost uh, 10 months here. And now uh, it is, uh, this, when, this thing didn't even get up to its 50, but it's now trading at uh, nearly 15% below that 200 simple moving average. Just just a rally back up to there would be amazing. <laughs> be a heck of a rally, but uh, I'm not anticipating that. Um, <clears throat> as long as the rates continue to trade higher, this one is going to get um, uh, sold. Uh, the Russell was doing a little better than the uh, NASDAQ and not quite as strong as the Dow. It almost made it up to its 200 and it got rejected with uh, Powell's comments on Wednesday. Anyway, I do not, you know, um, trade indexes. I trade stocks and the oil stocks, are the only game in town, really. Uh, the, the pipeline stocks are the ones that are, I mean, <laughs> don't even really have to comment on this. It's just in a power trend powering higher the only thing i would do is if i wanted to own this i would just um i would buy this on pullbacks you see a pullback to its 21 and i uh, would not be chasing it up here it's 83 percent above its 200 simple moving average these uh stocks are uh, they're like dogs they they trade in packs and this one is the pack leader this one's 109 percent above its 200 simple moving average so that one, you know, that's that's where I would uh, take profits or, or at least partial. That thing is way overheated. Uh, Sting is another one. Scorpio Tankers, STNG, another uh, transportation uh, pipeline stock. And this one, um, a big pullback on Friday, and it was down uh, more than 1%. It's 62.6%. Above it's 200, but it's definitely in a power trend and, and trending higher. Uh, TNK is another one in the group. Sound like a broken record here. It's just uh, broke out of this base and it's just trending higher and respecting its moving averages. 72.6% above it's uh, 200. So um, the one that's kind of lagging is uh, Chenier. This one uh, reported earnings and it had a negative response to earnings traded down to its 50 simple moving average. So this is the laggard. It's below its uh, 21 here, just barely. But um, uh, anyway, that's enough of that. I'm going to go to a couple of the uh, the larger uh, cap stocks. The integrated here is Chevron. This thing looks like it's setting up in a base here, uh, trading sideways. It did make a new high last week. And the XLE is looks pretty similar to. This is Exxon. This one did break out from its base. So it's a uh, leading Chevron there, another integrated Anyway, I want to take a look at some of the ex exploration stocks. Devon, this is one that uh, looks like it was set up nicely, had a negative response to earnings. Uh, they, I, I don't know, some news about their dividend. Anyway, that thing's paying like 7%. So um, if you own it for the dividend, you know, that's, I think you're still okay there. <laughs> it's not like they're going to, not going to uh, get rid of their dividend anytime soon. So Devon looks okay. Oxy is the one that's been in the news a lot because Mr. Buffett has been buying it. Looks a little better than Devon. They have earnings next week, 11.8. This time of year, you really got to be careful of the earnings because you can get caught in a blow up if you don't. Not all oil and gas stocks are doing well. Here's uh, Scallons, my favorite go-to when I want to look up a dog. This thing is <laughs> just, you can see how wide and loose this thing trades. And it just, uh, <laughs> it's got no uh, no strength. Um, anyway, it's all about buyers and sellers, and this doesn't have enough buyers, not enough demand there. Uh, Apache is one, um, it says uh, international exploration like Oxy, and it uh, gap, it didn't gap out of a base. It broke out of a base um, after earnings, positive response to earnings, and it's trending higher. So 
Apache looks good. And uh, Murphy, that's the last one I'm going to do here. Another international exploration stock that uh, broke out and then pulled back last week. So to me, that's like a, a gift. And it's uh, probably going to trade higher here, like with the rest of the cohort. Anyway, that's enough of the oil. I'm going to go to another energy area, and that's uh, solar in phase. This thing gaps up and then trades sideways. Gaps up after earnings, trade sideways. It's having trouble, um, you know, with the 300 number. It's just having trouble gaining traction. It's a really expensive stock, you know, and in this market, you know, a 38 billion uh, market cap for, you know, a couple billion in sales is, uh, it's pretty rich and uh, it's going to have to grow into its valuation. So uh, the other one is First Solar, which does not have as robust uh, earnings, but the stock is performing much better, as you can see. This one here is 68% uh, above its 200 and uh, trending well. Those are the two uh, leading solar stocks that, uh, that I like anyway. I do like the biotech sector, although it's trading sideways, much like uh, Vertex here. I mean, when the market's going down and, and selling off, like it has Vertex trading sideways as a champion here. Um, you know, it's got above the 300 level and it's just trading sideways near a trigger point there uh it's one that i i like it's a consistent uh and stable uh, earnings grower uh this is neurocrane they had news last week and it uh, traded higher and it's holding uh, its new highs here uh, at uh, 125 52 week new high if you look at the weekly and you can see that it's been higher in the past but uh nice consolidation pattern there on the weekly chart uh, another one that I like that uh, has earnings this week here is uh, Catalyst. They've been pretty solid on the uh, sales and earnings growth. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they have to say. This one uh, just uh, got back above its uh, 50. So uh, we'll see what they have to say this week on uh, the 9th, which is Wednesday, I believe. Harmony reported last week, had a positive response. You can see it consolidated here for uh, you know three or four months. And then... Um, had a little trigger point, gap tyrants holding its gain. So Harmony looks uh, real good. Gilead is one that I wanted to point out because it had a gap higher and it's holding its gains, which is pretty incredible in this market. It uh, yeah, had a big week last week, was up uh, 16, almost 17% and uh, tacked on another percent last week, which is great because the market's uh, NASDAQ had its uh, worst week since uh, January 21 last week. So for that one to hold up, that's uh, saying something. The networking stocks is a group that's performing uh, real well. Here's Extreme Networks broke out of this uh, base here and, and is holding its gains. Like in this in this market, that's fantastic. Uh, Calyx, another one, Gap Tire holding its gains. Sort of, <laughs> it was uh, it's fifteen percent off its highs, fifty two week high, and it was down six percent last week. So that's not really holding gains, but it did gap higher and it's above its twenty one. So. Uh, that's why I put that one up. Uh, and here's Arista. Why did I put this one up? Because it gets it gapped higher and it's holding its gains. So the networking stocks are uh, performing well. Uh, this is one that I I like and it's performing well. It did uh, <clears throat> fall below its um, 21 here last week. This is Digi International, DGII. And if you could take a look at the uh, weekly chart. Yeah, this thing broke out of this big consolidation and it's holding its gains. And, um, you know, in this market, you know, that, that that's a that's a huge win. It's 5% um, above its 50 simple moving average. So the networking stocks are doing well. I have to go to the food stocks because I'm really, uh, they, they're performing well for one, but they're gouging the consumer by raising prices. And as long as the consumer pays, they're going to continue uh, raising prices. This is Twinkie Hostess brand. You know, they've got a real uh, big brand and uh, they're performing well. It was up uh, 6% last week. Uh, they had earnings, I believe. Yeah, they had earnings and they had a positive response to earnings and uh, tacked on a little bit of gains on Friday. So good for Twinkie. General Mills is another one. <laughs> Not really a growth stock, but it's been performing well. If you listen to their conference calls, they're just raising prices. They're just passing on prices to the consumer, and the consumer is able to pay now. We'll see if that continues in the future, but a uh, big cause for inflation, these food stocks. Here's Hershey's. You know, it's set up in a base. You can see it's a base on base pattern, and it had earnings last week and kind of failed. Uh, I believe it 
opened higher and then uh, traded lower. You can't tell because these aren't candlesticks, but um, <clears throat> I believe that's what happened to Hershey. They uh, reported uh, strong numbers. Huh? Once again, they're uh, raising they're raising prices. I'm just going to go around here. A couple stocks here, random growth stocks. Here's Crocs, which had a, a huge sell off for about a year. And now it's forming a stage one base and then trying to break out of this base here. So uh, that'd be really uh, nice if it did. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we'll see. Um, I just had to research this stock. Uh, I don't know much about it. <laughs> Here's SMCI. This had a, a earnings gap on Wednesday. And of course, with the, you know, the, the market selling off and with the Fed raising rates, this is going to, you know, I think it's going to struggle. It's got a gap here at... Uh, 72.20. So if it trades back to here and just goes sideways, that's fine. Uh, they, they, this is a stock with, uh, if you look at the sales on this thing, it's got 34, it's got like 7 billion annual sales and the market cap's like 4 billion. So I'm not going to say it's cheap, but it, it could trade higher. <laughs> if the multiple expands at all, it should trade higher. And that's why I keep this one on my radar. Uh, Lanthius had real strong earnings. You can see triple digit earnings, but you know, it was up like 180% this year. And so it's sold off, probably going to form a base here, but it's below it's 200 and you know, nothing good happens below the 200, right? So um, it'll probably just form a base. The last time it reported earnings, it traded down to the 50 and then regained and made a high. And then now it's, um, you know, uh, it's, this is a sell sign for sure, but you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to keep my eye on it because any any uh, company that is uh, growing like this, you, you know, need to keep your eyes on because the market will turn. It's not going to be this bearish forever and ever. And this is uh, one that I watch. They have a real fantastic product that doctors really like. Uh, Murphy, this is a retail stock, I guess. It's got a gas component, but it's a mini market and uh, it's been showing good growth. And if I just show the weekly, you can see how. It's been performing over the years, a real winning stock. And the last one I want to show is Shockwave because everybody likes Shockwave. They have earnings uh, Monday, I believe the seventh is Monday. Yeah. So um, be careful on this one. <laughs> it's going to either uh, gap down or gap up. This thing does not like to, to settle in and uh, trade sideways. Uh, this thing moves a lot. So I expect something like uh, perhaps this, like they had a 17 point move or maybe some, it'll go down like this. Um, but uh, anyway, we never give up. 